been getting a lot of questions lately about general guidance for getting started in your data analytics career. So a lot of times I want to respond and just answer people in messages or on comments or something like that. And uh, that takes a lot of time. So I figured I never really made a video like this. So this is my first attempt at general guidance for getting your data analytics career started. One caveat before we get going, there's a lot of things that's going to be very personal to me, my experience, what I've been through. This guidance that I give you is assuming that you have baseline skills. Now, just, let me just touch on that real quick. Baseline skills for a data analyst, I'm assuming that you can work with spreadsheets, primarily Excel or Google Sheets, that you can work with formulas, lookups, pivot tables, that sort of thing, that you can query a database with some uh, through some format, some server, uh, some SQL language that you've got some, some savvy in writing queries and getting information out of a database in an organized format, and that you've studied and worked with a business intelligence platform. Now that can be can absolutely be advanced use of SQL. If you're using it for charts and graphs, if you're doing some advanced things with pivot tables, if you're using Power Query, Power Pivot, that sort of thing, or if you're using some kind of higher level, uh, more expensive stuff, Power BI is a great one. But if you're using Tableau or Alteryx or uh, one of those paid platforms, those are great too. Once you have those three things under your belt to where you can actually work with them, then I would say you have baseline skills. Should you work on a programming language? Absolutely. If that's something that you want to have as part of your arsenal or if that's a requirement for the job, kind of jobs you're looking for. But those three things, being able to use spreadsheets, being able to query a database, and being able to use a business intelligence platform are enough to get you in the door and get you to start working. So the advice that I give builds upon that. And I'm not a particular expert in any of those technical skills, so I don't like to belabor those points because it kind of points out my shortcomings. The first point that I will give you is you need to build your network. This is something that has worked like gangbusters for me. It's something I recommend to everybody. There are people that push back on this. Uh, there are people that don't like having to build relationships in order to get a job. They think that the technical skills should be it. If they have experience, they want their experience and their technical skills to win the day, regardless of their interpersonal skills or what relationship they've built. For better or worse, that's not the world we live in. And so you really need to build a network of some sort. What has worked for me is building that digital network on LinkedIn. You don't have to do it that way. If you want to go hang out at your local country club, if there happen to be a bunch of data professionals there, awesome. Make all of your connections in person. If you live in a giant metropolitan area, maybe if you live in New York or Raleigh, Durham or Charlotte, these are places where you don't necessarily need a digital network. Your in-person network may be sufficient. If that's you, awesome. I live in remote Eastern North Carolina. My jobs are remote. I don't have an in-person network to rely upon here in Carteret County. So when people come to me and they say, what am I doing wrong? And I look and the first thing I see is they have 150 connections on LinkedIn. That's the first thing I'm gonna focus on because network has worked for me. I believe that having at least an adequate network of 500 or so connections will work for just about anybody. I don't care how introverted you are, you can send a respectful connection message. You can send emails that describe your value proposition and ask for small favors from connections. And that's gonna work for you. If, if I see someone who, ha who puts out no content, whose profile is incomplete, who doesn't comment on anybody else's content, like I said, however you wanna build that network, whether you wanna do it digitally or in person, but there is an interpersonal aspect to it that is tremendously important. In fact, it's, you can't do without it. And so in the world we live in, the, the skills and experience are very rarely going to be enough to get you that job. There's going to be an interpersonal aspect. So I recommend that you build your network. 
at least to 500 connections and stay engaged with that network. The second thing I'll say is you've got to have a resume that makes a difference. And I'm kind of a late adopter of the great resume tactic, but it's something that has worked well for me and I've seen it work well for other people. I see a ton of resumes. A lot of them are boring. A lot of them are ineffective. A lot of them are so geared towards hitting all of the keywords that they forget to be readable and interesting and engaging to a human person. And so my recommendation is that you pass on that Microsoft Word template. For those of you veterans coming out of the military, maybe pass on that, that free resume advice that you get through your transition assistance or through whatever transition platform you're using. Honestly, if it's free, it's probably not worth a whole lot. And that's what I generally see from people. And when I see a terrible resume, I, the first thing I ask them is, where'd you get this? Where, where did the template come from? Who helped you with this? And it's almost always some sort of free asset. My university's career services department helped me with it. Or if you're coming out of the military, my first sergeant, my sergeant major helped me with it. Free help generally means worthless help. Not always, but most of the time. So take the time to make your resume a difference maker. Um, don't, don't have it be boring. Have it an interesting template. Um, make your, your content have impact. Watch your weak language, weak verbs that remove you from being the, the doer of the action. I have a whole different video I need to do on resumes, but... Uh, yeah, make your resume, take the time and take the expense if necessary to make your resume a difference maker. That third thing that really worked more than anything for me is be an individual. And that ties in with the resume as well. You don't want your resume to blend in with the crowd. You want it to stand out. But you want yourself to stand out too. So if that means your profile, your personal brand, the content you're putting out, if you have a portfolio, which I recommend, if you have a blog, if you have an email or newsletter or a YouTube channel, have that be part of your individuality. And you have to develop something that is a data superpower or a professional superpower, a job getting thing that helps you to stand out from the crowd. In my first job, my superpower, the thing that made me stand apart was I had just retired after 20 years in the Marine Corps. Now, you can't replicate that, and I don't recommend that you go enlist and become an officer and spend 20 years in the military in order to copy this amazing template of success that I've sent out for you. But what I do recommend is you play to your strengths. What makes you different? Do you have a hobby that is just spectacular and strange and wonderful? Have you honed some skill like being a brilliant concert pianist or... Uh, if you have a, a successful YouTube channel, if you have a blog, if you have something that, that stands you out from the crowd, emphasize that. Talk about that. And if it doesn't relate to data analytics, figure out a way to make it relate. We've got people out there writing songs about SQL. If you're a musician, why couldn't you do that? My second job, I got it because of my over-the-top network, because of my skill set with Alteryx, but really because I demonstrated that I could get out here and speak just like I'm doing right now. I got recruited essentially to come be a customer training instructor. Now my skills with the platform were adequate and my demonstration of abilities was adequate, but really it was the fact that I'll get up here on YouTube and talk to anybody. I'll get up there on LinkedIn and talk to anybody. And that is a fairly unique and somewhat rare skill. And so I recommend to you, just find what it is that makes you an individual. Not all hobbies are terribly interesting. Not all hobbies are going to be relatable to a profession. I used to brew beer. I don't know that I would emphasize that as necessarily being a data or a professional superpower. But find what makes you you. Find what makes you special and emphasize that as a strength, whether it relates to data analytics or not. So folks, to sum up, the way that you can get ahead and the way that I recommend for you, once you have your baseline technical skills taken care of and that they're, they're adequate, they're enough to get you to start on that job, 
Number one, build that network in whatever way seems fit to you. Number two, make your resume a difference maker. That may involve paying for it. You just got to get good with that and ask yourself, is that job worth the 100 or 200 bucks or however much it costs to make that resume a weapon, something that's going to get you in the door for interviews? And then that third thing is build on your individuality. What makes you you? What makes you special? What makes you stand out from the crowd? What's going to be that superpower that's going to get you the job instead of fin finishing second, third, getting screened out by the ATS? Folks, if you have questions on that, if you have comments about that, if you disagree with me, I'm happy to hear it. Again, this is in response to a lot of questions, people asking for advice on how to get their foot in the door, how to get started with their data career. And so I look forward to referring people to this video. I'd love to know what ideas you have for better content that I can make going forward. Thanks, Semper Fidelis, and I'll talk to you later.